What's going on guys? Welcome back to Clay's Coins. I believe confidence creates confidence, so I'm here to bring you some information, education, and better understanding of cryptocurrency and the stock market. It's not financial advice, however. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not an indication or suggestion to buy, hold, or sell any cryptocurrency or stock talked about in this video or on this channel. Today we're going to be looking at two cryptocurrencies, some price action that's going on with them. Uh, one of them you guys have requested a few times and another one I just talked about in a recent uh, listing video. I think it has, shows a lot of promise and its experience. I think it's up like 120% on the week, something crazy like that. Uh, it's going to be Rubik and Jasmine. Before we do guys, I got to do the YouTube stuff. My goal is to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of June. It's a big goal, but it's my goal. And with your help and support, actually, that's all I need. That's the only thing I need is your help and support. Without it, none of this means anything. All I need you to do is hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll give you a moment to do so real quick. And that will help out the channel more than you could ever know. Dope. Thank you guys so much for taking the time and liking and subscribing the videos. All right, guys, the first cryptocurrency we're going to be looking at today is Rubik, ticker symbol RBC. Uh, this was one of the stars, if you will, of my Kraken listing video that just came out recently. Uh, go check that out if you haven't already. I'll put a card up in the corner for you. Rubik is, it looks very promising. I believe it was ranked in the 700s. Um, go back and watch that video and comment down below and let me know what rank Rubik was when it listed. I believe it was like 740. 49 or something like that and uh, it's already up at 670 on coinmarketcap.com obviously take coin market cap rankings with a grain of salt that's not a tell-all to a cryptocurrency because bias is definitely a factor when it comes to that when you look at hex hex is ranked like 201 and its market cap would place it in like the top 10 usually on any given day so just keep things in mind when you when you look at stuff like that it's a good indication but it's not a tell-all like many things we'll be looking at in this video because we're gonna be looking at the charts so let's go ahead and get into the chart right now um, I just want to give you guys an up-to-date you know at the time of this recording kind of layout of the the numbers we're working with the market cap the volume uh, circulating supply these are things we could technically find out I guess on the chart but you know it's just laid out easier for you right here and as you can see the price action has been crazy um, it's up tremendously. Let's see, over the last month, we, are, we had a low of 13 cents and a high of 36 cents. So <clears throat> let's jump into the chart. So we're going to start off on the daily candles. So the reason we're going to do this is to get a very long term. We're going to be looking, we're going to be dating back to April 1st of 2021, all the way up until present day. So almost a full year now. And uh, with the daily candles, it's not as exact for, you know, pinpoint pricing. However, um, it's it's definitely easier to get some baseline. So what we'll do is we're going to take a, a horizontal line and obviously you had that little flash right there. So, but we're not looking for an all time low. We're kind of just looking for something right here. We'll put that as red and then, uh, you know, we'll move up here because that's not something we've seen since what? June or July 20th of last year. That's not a level. That's the last time we've seen that low. However, that is a support line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a horizontal line right across here. And that's going to be the just about all time high for relatively recent. And now we're going to go ahead and throw a Fibonacci indicator on here. So this is a tool I like to use because one thing you'll notice here is we have a little bit of contradiction in how you'll uh, look at levels and one of the most common indicators is if you'll notice from the last video we just did is lower lows and lower highs indicating a bearish trend higher highs and higher lows indicating a bullish trend um, obviously like right here you can see it keeps going down lower 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 However, we had the big price, uh, the big volume pump from the Kraken listing, and that skyrocketed the price right around the perfect time that Bitcoin decided to break a huge level um, that was very crucial for the overall health of the crypto market. If you haven't checked that out, go check out my most recent uh, video about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Binance, looking at the charts that I, like we have right here. Um, there's been a lot of price action lately. I don't usually do a lot of chart work on the channel just because I like to stick to the uh, almost encyclopedia type information. However, the chart work is it really needs to be done right now because there's a lot of movement and a lot of people are trying to figure out what to do and what to expect really 
So as you can see here, in two days, I mean, this isn't exactly accurate. You know, it's a little bit more. Give or take, it's up about 150 to 200 percent in the last few days. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of this because that was just to show the fact that we had these lower lows. However, it contradicted and met itself with a higher high because... You had a huge listing volume pump, and uh, it's it's not always indicative, you know what I mean? Because w from a technical standpoint, all this lines up until you hit a fundamental standpoint where it lists on a new exchange or cryptocurrency gets a big partnership, um, if it starts trending for some reason on Twitter. I mean, no joke, those things are massive, massive price pumps. Please do not forget the fact that Elon Musk sent Dogecoin into oblivion by saying something on Saturday Night Live. Kid, kid, like, that's real. That's a real timeline in human history. So now that we've established that, we're gonna go ahead and put a horizontal line for our recent lows, which is just about right here. Obviously, we have this breakthrough right here, um, which was seemingly false, and we're on the daily can, uh, daily chart, so, you know, it's not as, you know, it's, it's not a tell-all. Let's see, let's actually break it down. Let's go to the four hour and see how yeah so we had just about I guess we can lower it but I, I prefer this one right here just because it's a more confirmed kind of level um, these are all rather flashes in and out so what we're gonna do is pl now place a Fibonacci indicator which is a legacy stock market tool and um, it's it works very well just for identifying identifying levels however anything like this when it comes to um, any sort of technical analysis nothing we're doing here is too extraordinary but anything like this um it can end up being a self-fulfilling prophecy i mean you have to think if you have 50 percent of people who are invested all looking at the exact same indicator assuming it's going to do what they think it's going to do it ends up fulfilling itself because you have so much interaction based around the fact that you believe these levels are real that they you end up fulfilling that prophecy yourself so um, looking at this however like you can see uh, it instantly makes a tremendous amount of sense as with any lines but uh, you know especially when you see things like this right here this level right here through December of last year this was an excellent example of the Fibonacci's playing out so we had this non-stop downward pressure right here all through here all through here and it led us all the way down to this Fibonacci level we touched it once and touched it twice granted these this one right here is our low that we just ran it on this one and this one so you're not talking about a basic support level that you're generally used to seeing you're talking about the Fibonacci level fulfilling itself and what the indication has suggested suggested which is it had enough volume and relative volatility for the time period i'm assuming this was some sort of listing something like that or it was quite literally the levels themselves showing themselves to be true which is definitely what i'm i'm a fan of so what you could see is it hit here jumped all the way back up made sure to hit above this level tested and tried to get above because that's the point is once you break these levels and you can turn this support I mean this resistance rather into a support that's you know that's indicative of where you're headed if things keep pumping rather than trying to call the top you have a, a decent indicator of what a realistic top could be and we came pretty close here you know within a cent or so but the downwards pressure was too great and so you showed this resistance tried to turn into a support fell back under and then became an excellent line of resistance as it channeled back down so that's just you know that's from last december so it's not necessarily relevant but if you want to look at it like that nothing that we learn about in history class is necessarily relevant because it happened in the past but as you guys know history tends to repeat itself in certain ways the price action has been great to bounce us up from this level all the way up with the listing you know there's a reason that it didn't run all the way up here from the listing because that would just be too much or it's there's a reason it didn't run up to right around here these levels they're not a tell-all. I cannot say that enough. I cannot stress that enough. You're not going to use this indicator and become rich off of just using a FIB level. Obviously, there are so many more indicators. Look at this right here. I believe if you just go to 
my script technicals look at all of these indicators bang look at all those i mean every people swear by every single one of those i'm sure people have sworn by every positive trade they made is benefit is because of that indicator while someone else is going to say every cent they've ever lost is because of that same indicator these things it's very hard to tell how often they work and I've, I've seen videos break down how often they work but it's just another tool in your tool belt that you can utilize to help you understand and get a better idea of a prediction and a reasonable relatable f future that you can understand you know you can hear levels all the time and if once you can do it yourself and just you know download trading view or go to tradingview.com click this little button right here hit fib retracement and then do it like that and then you're like oh wow this is all these people have been doing yeah that's all you're doing like, you know and it's that's the thing is it's not going to instantly make you rich but as you keep practicing and get more familiar with these charts and these systems you start to understand why things are happening a certain way and if you don't understand you're you're understanding how these indicators can dictate what's happening so it's it's all like i usually say more information and a better understanding because once you have the competence and know how to use this you'll be more confident in the chart and where the price is going to go you'll understand that as of right now it's really trying to battle and fight back and forth on this line what does it look like it's going to do it looks like it's going to make another push up and try to make this 23.6 percent level this fib level right here at the 31 cent range a support rather than a resistance it's not a tell-all that's not saying a guarantee that it's going to do it however it's a good um indication that it may do so and i know that was a rather long-winded rant on pretty much sticking up for something that no one is attacking but there's a certain i don't know there's a stigma around technical analysis especially when it comes to crypto where it's kind of a waste of time or you know it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and granted there's some weight to everything however if it makes you feel better and you feel like it's making you money and then on paper it shows like it's making you money who's gonna tell you it's not working same goes both ways you know what I mean so let's look at a more uh, finite time span here and look at Rubik over the past couple days so we're gonna pull up the 15 minute candles here we'll do and look at what we've been looking at over the past few days so right here is from the 29th to the 30th and the recent price action as you can see now that we're getting on the 15 minute candles the candles are you know the volume is starting to get a lot choppier you're starting to see downward pressure right here however you're noticing some wedges being created because you're going to notice the lower highs however you're having higher lows and this would indicate some sort of breakout coming soon um this is also kind of just the chart finding or the crypto itself finding where it needs to be due to this listing and due to the more recent volume that it's going to be experiencing but when you take that into consideration look at this right here so you had a similar breakout with a wedge that was forming right here. It didn't really make sense at the time, and then now looking back on it, it does. And all of, obviously everything I'm saying here can just be null and void in a couple days, but if you look at an 8% jump based off that wedge bounce, um, an 8% jump would put you just above that line and once we get above that line again it looks like we're going to show some serious strength and uh, we could absolutely see some strength held on the 31 cent level for rubik and if so if we have um you know a few a few days can be such a quick flash in the pan in the grand scheme of things in price action and price movement i mean if you're talking about last fall if you would have waited a couple weeks for jasmine to fall from 17 cents to 10 cents before you bought in look at how bad you'd be hurting right now even though you waited that little bit waiting a little bit can also mean waiting a couple months so it's very hard to tell however you know based on this price pump right now i personally am going to wait to see if this breakout is going to maybe indicate a downward trend and we start heading back down here 
doing something like this where we keep coming up bouncing up and testing not necessarily higher highs but not a sharp downwards decrease so i'm gonna wait till the 18 cent mark before i load up again right around there just because i do believe if we fall and we don't turn this 31 cent into a support rather quickly um we'll see the 18 cent tested or something close to it again maybe around the 20 cent mark that's going to be my zone for my buy zone for rubik and now we can take a look at jasmine jasmine coin you guys know it you guys love it and uh you know, I'm starting to become a fan of Jasmine again just because of the, the overwhelming positivity in the Jasmine community. You know, unless you say that it's not going to go to $5 and then everyone wants to take your head off. However, that makes me very happy. Um, it's not going to $5 anytime soon, but, you know, once the total market cap of the entire crypto market is 3,000 trillion quadrillion... But as you can see, one of the notable features and the really the really the reason I wanted to show this coin market cap, because 3.37 times the total market cap has been traded in the last 24 hours. Look at that. $615 million traded in the last 24 hours with a $179 million market cap. That's an incredible amount of volume in comparison to the market cap. So let's look at the chart. All right, so looking at Jasmine on the daily candles, I already have a red line here, and um, it is just about the all-time low, I believe, for quite a long time, obviously way, way, way back here. No, I guess we, we traded for a little bit prior to that. That's actually kind of nerve-wracking, knowing that we could have gone even lower. But for relative um, highs and lows, this is definitely our relative low, which was right around the one cent mark. And once we hit there, we had a massive explosion. Um, as of recently, looking at from this was March 8th, right until now, March 30th, um, we've experienced a 280% increase at some levels, give or take, upwards of a 355% increase. So yeah, Jasmine has made a lot of people a lot of money again, if you bought right here keep in mind however when in doubt zoom out if you didn't buy after the 31st of january pretty much if you bought any time from last october to january you are still down on jasmine do you see what i mean um <laughs> it's very hard to just openly love and accept the idea that this is going to run to a dollar when it has struggled to pay, make people money that have gotten in over two cents. You see what I mean? It's uh, when everyone, you know, not technically everyone, but a great amount of buyers over the past year are out of the money, even with the per recent price movement. Granted, we have been in a massive downward cycle when it comes to the entire market as a whole. However, Jasmine in itself has really, really hurt and just bled for the past few months. But it looks like we're we're picking back up where we where we left off here with Jasmine and looking to set up another run similar to something like this right here. Um, would be some uh, candle movement that I would I would consider rather similar right here. Let's see, just about and um, that was a three cent price movement as you can see, but it was from six cents up to nine cents so it's not the one to three cent like you can see right here being the monumental percentile however it's just about the same in cent wise and so looking at jasmine we're gonna go ahead on this daily chart and put these a couple extended lines to show you guys on a realistic sense what we're looking at because we finally broke this massive downward trend and there's not really a way you can make this work in a downward sense you could argue right here but you're gonna have you know you're gonna be adjusting your lines every day and that's not really the point of doing this it's kind of uh putting lines in places and giving an ac an accurate a decently accurate description of a prediction of the future that you might be able to say held true that's the best thing i'll say about about the technical analysis i guess you could call it that we're doing here but let's go into the uh the more intraday when it comes to jasmine so looking at the past couple days as a whole um realistically we had a huge 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 run up and then we had a decent drop off here 
in the RSI from the 30th or from the 30th, yeah, as if we're not still on the 30th, from about 6.45 this morning downwards of 8 o'clock tonight. So that is really good to see the RSI drop all the way down to 43 from a huge number of 79 or so, 80, to see it drop down to 43 while only in that t same time frame dropping from, you know, Four cents almost? No. In that same time frame, dropping from right here at 3.8 to where are we at now? 3.7. I mean, come on, guys. That's excellent. If you're not really sure what that means, this is just the relative strength index. This is just the RSI stands for relative strength index. It's just uh, the green line right here indicates that something is pretty overbought and this indicates that something is pretty oversold. If something's oversold down here in the red, it's a bearish indicator. If something's up here in the green, it's a bullish indicator. You don't need to get too uh, in depth with it. So when you're seeing that something's overbought, 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 it means that you can expect some price, de you know, some price correction to come down, and um, that's that's good. It's healthy if you know. To see this price stay up here while the RSI comes down quite a bit means that you can witness some RSI push up again, and the price follow that same pattern without having to take a big breath of fresh air to load up and uh, make some sense of the indicators, you know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna move back out to the hour candles because I want to show you guys over the past week or so what we're looking like for Jasmine. And uh, this is from this big run up on March 14th all the way to today. At the time of this recording, March 30th, we're gonna put an extended line up because this is what we've been looking at here and I don't know if that's necessarily sustainable however we are necessarily starting a downtrend not in the sense of oh no we need to be worried however we can see that a run-up like this was not sustainable to keep going obviously if you see an extended line running like that that is a, that's going to stop you're not going to be able to see an acute price movement like that forever unless it is a straight up scheme so what we can witness here over the past little bit is that we're starting to form a wedge in which something needs to happen uh we're noticing obviously the top the descending highs are definitely more confirmed you generally have one two three four, maybe five, you know, maybe four, maybe five confirmations on that top level. You have one or two on this bottom level, but um, if you wanted to, you could even say that this has been in a descending channel following the price action and that it's actually not a wedge, but looking at it longer term, I would say it's definitely a wedge. However, you can take that wedge out right here and look at it like this. And we're looking at a decent descending channel downwards. Um, I would say that this, I'm gonna say this one right here, guys, is gonna be a level we can really count on for the foreseeable future. Um, talking about relative strength, and talking about what we've witnessed over the past couple days in terms of price strength rather than price movement. Um, obviously, it's going to be volatile. There's going to be a big price increase. And um, if it can hold this strength and show some health and then get ready for another takeoff, that's going to be the important sign. If not, we may see a gap fill back down, but I really, really doubt it. I believe that this is more so a gap fill up to start correcting and start getting to this back to this point. I mean, remember guys, in January, Jasmine was upwards of nine cents. That's still almost triple the money from where we are sitting right now. So we fell all the way down here. You can see this is a really hard line. So if we can start pushing up towards that six cent mark, um, that's going to be a big, big, big resistance now that we, if we can turn that into a support, um, it's going to be crucial for us. You want to talk about 
a resistance level that we need to look at breaking, I would say right around here, right around this five cent, five two mark, that's gonna be a hard resistance for us to break. So it's looking like as of right now, we are going to trade in between this channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to green. This can stay red. Now we can zoom in a little bit on this. Let's go to the hour mark. And this is gonna be our channel that we're gonna trade in. Somewhere in between the three and five two cent mark. So that's a big, big switch. I mean, you guys gotta think that is a 70% swing. If you can get in at down here and swing out up there, that's a huge gain on your money, guys. So just keep in mind that we have a, just going over this, talking it out with you guys, um, just trying to throw out some useful tips and tricks and, you know, just monotonous stuff that you kind of do without thinking about. And then when you're trying to tell someone about it, it's, it's kind of um, weird to articulate. But just doing that, we're able to figure out some very basic levels of what we've been at, you know, where we currently are sitting and looking at bouncing off of what we should go through to get to where we need to go. That's all we just identified there. It looks pretty nice, and we're gonna see if we, uh, you know, if it holds up. I would say um, a lot of people want to ask me about different buy zones and things like that. Obviously, I have a spiel at the start of my videos for a reason. Um, all I can tell you is what I would be looking to get in at, and at the current. Um, rate if we can hold this for probably another week. I have a really hard time with Jasmine I have a hard time trusting Jasmine sometimes and I have a hard time trusting Loopring sometimes but Loopring um, I'm probably gonna revisit my uh, Loopring Immutable X GameStop video just because the NFT marketplace is 1000% happening and all of those are part partnerships are correct if you haven't seen that video go check it out I called it perfectly like a month or so ago and uh, I'm happy it's happening because a lot of people were trying try crashing loopering but with the price and the amount that loopering can lose and gain it's just you have to stay very proactive you have to stay very immersed in the crypto sphere and be alert of what is going on and if you don't have the time for that you guys can always just hit that like button hit that subscribe button and uh, the notification bell so you never miss an update um, as long as we have some uh, quite a bit of choppy volatility here uh, where I'm gonna keep these price updates going because I think it's crucial and a lot of people don't have the time to sit around and invest hours into research and look back at historical data and different things like that but I do I don't mind doing it I actually enjoy it so if I can pass some information along to you guys that's even better all right guys that's gonna be everything for the video today I hope you guys enjoyed I'm gonna have another one coming out with alchemy pay and veracity uh, I wanted to break them up get a little bit more in-depth However, um, you know, dedicate at least 10, 15 minutes to each individual cryptocurrency. I guess I could break these up into like 10 minute individual videos, but I don't want to do that right yet. Let me know if you guys would rather see that down in the comment section down below. If not, I'll probably just keep the chart videos to a uh, two, three, maybe four coin limit just because the more cryptocurrencies or stocks you look at when you're charting, the less time you're going to be able to take on each one. And then, the, you know, that's the, it's, it takes, it kind of takes the sense out of it. You know, I, I eventually want to get to the point of, you know, sitting on the live streams for like 30, 45 minutes, an hour, maybe more. And, uh, you know, sitting there and going over individual cryptos with you guys, looking at different ones you guys want on the spot in real time. So, uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel so in the future we can get those live streams going i plan on doing that right around 10k when i hit that uh subscriber mark in june and that guys you know the drill by now if you made it to the end of the video put a flex and emoji in the comment section down below thank you guys stay hydrated take care of yourselves look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you're doing a great job because if you liked and subscribed to this video you are thank you guys Beep.